Spidey has finally wall crawled his way into the MCU thanks to a complicated and surprising deal between Sony and Marvel, the details of which are only just coming to light. And of course, with Sony launching their own Spideyverse movies, we're all wondering whether we'll also see Venom in the MCU, or if Sony's films will stand alone. Join us as we untangle this tightly woven web of contrasting reports. How Spider-Man Wound Up at Sony it all began back in ancient history, aka the 90s. After huge comic sales in the 60s, 70s, and 80s, a slew of bad business decisions and a shift in the comic market caused Marvel's stock to plummet, and they declared bankruptcy in December of 1996. You didn't think it would be so complicated, did you? Without a movie studio of their own, Marvel had sold their biggest characters, Spider-Man, Fantastic Four, and the X-Men, to Sony and Fox. Only a fraction of the box office gain went to Marvel Comics, so in 2005, they decided to make their own films. Thanks to a generous loan from Bank of America, the Marvel Cinematic Universe was born with Iron Man 1. How does the Sony deal work? Ever wonder why there have been six Spider-Man movies in the last 15 years? That's because if Sony doesn't make a Spider-Man movie at least once every five years, the rights revert to Marvel. And of course, Sony doesn't want to lose the biggest selling superhero of all time. But all wasn't well at Sony HQ. Crawl back to 2014 for a moment, and you'll remember that the relative failure of The Amazing Spider-Man 2 left the franchise battered and bruised like it had just gone 10 rounds with the Rhino. Sony was left flailing, throwing out ideas of a solo Aunt May spin-off that proved how aimless the franchise had become. Enter Marvel. It's 2015 and fans are clamoring for Spidey to swing into the MCU. So, Sony and Marvel put their heads together to come up with a solution. Spider-Man would be integrated into the MCU, rebooting the franchise with Tom Holland's debut in Captain America Civil War. The details of this deal have never fully been made public, and we all assumed that Marvel and Sony would equally share the profits for any future appearance from Spider-Man. But this isn't true at all. Amazingly, Sony will take home every cent made from the box office revenue of Spider-Man Homecoming, allowing Marvel to make the movie, Sony handle the distribution, and rake in the profits. Not only that, but Spidey's MCU appearance will hype up the release of Sony spin-offs, Venom and Silver and Black. So, why would Marvel agree to this? Tell me what's going on. Well, the studio may win out in the long run. Crucially, Marvel retains all the rights to merchandise, which is where the real money is. Spider-Man is actually the biggest seller when it comes to toys. In 2014, Spider-Man's toys made $1.3 billion, more than the Avengers, Batman, and Superman combined. And, of course, Marvel will retain all profits from Spider-Man's appearances in other MCU movies like Avengers Infinity War. What this means for the future of Spidey and Venom. Despite conflicting reports from executives, right now it seems that Venom and Silver and Black exist in the same reality that Homecoming is set in. But because of the legalities, Spider-Man will not appear in these movies. So basically, the Avengers will ignore Venom and Silver and Black in the same way they ignore the Defenders and Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Or at least that's the truth until Feige tells us it isn't. But if you're hoping to see Tom Hardy and Tom Holland go head-to-head -head as Venom and Spidey, don't hold your breath. 